what's up i'm back in this segment i'm going to get into the concept of vibration thought light and sound and i'm putting all of them together because i think they're extremely important when you get into understanding your spiritual path and sometimes as spiritual folk we get a little intimidated by science you know many of us get into yin and yang for instance we you know we quote that we you know we say everything has a counterpart well when you look at it from that angle in science right light is basically it's electromagnetic radiation and basically it's almost the same way electricity magnetism interacting with each other and creating the other lights and ultraviolet spectrum that you see it's not really that hard to understand just different terminology so when you Understanding light, though, is extremely important for your spiritual path because light basically is how energy gets transferred from one point in space to the next point in space. Bar none. So even when you deal with the mental plane and you deal with the fact that light goes into the mental plane, brings energy from that realm back down to the physical where we can receive it. Just like you see the sun, and the sun is millions of light rays, millions of miles away from the earth, and we receive light from the sun. Same thing. The sun, even though it's not in our same location, eventually it comes here via light. So light is actually how, how the universe transfers energy from one point in space to the next point in space. Even going into different dimensions, even going into different planes. So it's a very so light is a very important aspect to understand. Now, when you're dealing with light, you're dealing with something that is basically unique because it has two main qualities it's a wave and it's a particle now when you say okay what is that you know it's getting a little too technical J just imagine a particle like a localized object in space and time right and a wave is basically something that's moving through space but it's disrupting it so like you know if if, if you feel wind the wind is not part of the environment that you see here naturally. It just comes in. So it's like a wave. It comes in and it's like an invader in a sense. And it's like a disturbance. A better word to say is a disturbance in time. In space, I mean, rather. Now, when you look at it from that point of view, then you say, okay, you see space. You see the sun's light coming through. Hits us. It's like a wave moving through the space. But... You, Light is unique because it's a wave and a particle. Where sound, it's just a wave. It's not really, a, it's not as much as a particle. So sound needs a medium to travel through. A medium meaning a buffer. So sound could travel through air. So because of that, sound and light ends up being very important. But it also being, it also ends up being kind of like the center of some debates, which comes first, light or sound. Now light travels a lot faster than sound. No question about it. It's not even close. Light travels faster. And light doesn't even need a medium to travel through. So light can travel through space with no problem. Now, this may seem like a, like a real deep question in light versus sound. And, you know, the materialist would say sound for sure because it, 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 does, it just has less obstacles that it has to go through. It travels faster. The thing is, though, is obviously sound is vibration. I don't think anyone will argue that. But ancient scientists knew that light was also vibration. And when you understand that light's also vibration, it puts a little different... It, it changes how you would see how the light and sound are, which one comes first. Because in a sense, you know, the ancient Hindus would talk about the Om sound. They talk about how that created the whole universe. The Christians would say, God said, let there be light. Now that is controversial, though, because it, all could, it could also say in the beginning was the word. So if you say in the beginning was the word, sound comes first. If you say let it be light, light comes first. Based on how the Christians perceive it, based on how the Eastern philosophy perceives it, for the most part, sound comes first. And some people may take it and say, thought comes first. And really, light, thought, sound, it's just, just vibration. Even matter, it's just vibration. The reason why we have a hard time understanding it is because we like to put things in compartments we compartmentalize a lot of things and when we do that we don't know the relationship that they have to each other 
And then that's why in the Eastern systems, they'll talk about the world being an illusion because then our ability to understand the world is fragmented at best. And it comes up short oftentimes, especially when we need it to change our physical reality or even our mental reality. Because you can't, you can't change the physical reality if you don't change the mental reality first. So, in a sense, when you're talking about light, light being the mechanism that energy from one point in space goes next point in space, even from the mental plane, astral plane, the physical plane, energy is extremely important for your spiritual path. Even being able to just saying sound, I mean, just saying the mind creates the universe, you've got to have to understand energy to some extent, light. Because light, even... In a lot of alternative systems, they always mention how light can change moods. Light can heal people. Same way how sound can heal people. Well, of course, because if we're made up of thought, if, we're, if the human body is made up of thought energy, matter. They're all vibration. So sound and light can change it, can change our minds, right? Can change our, our moods, can actually physically change our body if it's done for a long period of time. That's what people don't read. That's the, that's the fundamentals people don't understand. So understanding light and energy is extremely important. Even the fact that when we say light, right, and we talk about the full time, the reason why that's important to understand is because when you start to deal with the substances that quantum physics studies, they function like light in the sense that they're both waves and particles. So it's extremely important to understand light because light traditionally is the mechanism that helps you really understand the higher worlds. Because it's almost like it represents an aspect of the higher worlds that you can see with your visible eyes. So it's almost like an aspect of the higher worlds that comes into the physical. And if you know how to manipulate it, if you know how to make it change your, the way you perceive things, you can manipulate matter with it. You can manipulate your body with it. And you could create modifications on your body. That's extremely important. The same with sound. So when you, go, when you go through light versus sound, for me, it's a countless debate because it's vibration. Light is vibration. Sound is vibration. So if I see a car and the word car comes to my mind, that gives off a vibration. It's still a sound. But it may not be a sound that science would recognize. So then that's when you get into thought. How the mental substance of the universe is something that science has a problem recording, right? Analyzing. But, vibra but thoughts are vibration as well. So when a person understands that, they understand then that the differences between sound, vibration, thought, light is superficial at best. And because of the important thing, though, even though it's superficial at best, we have to understand them both logically and intuitively. Though. And that's why I want to cover a little bit more science, because a lot of people on YouTube are getting the, the intuitive part. But I think I could do my part better by getting the logical part better. So when you look at it carefully, when you see the seven frequencies, the seven ultraviolet lights, and the lights that are visible and not visible, and you see your seven chakras, when you see these forces interacting with each other, like a male and female interacting with each other, they're coming through the, all, your whole seven chakras. That's just basically showing you how complex the body is and basically showing you that all the lights that you see is still, is still just a byproduct of electromag electricity and magnetism interacting with each other, if that makes any sense to you. So light is extremely important because, the mold number one, it's how energy goes from one point to the next point. Number two, you can bring energy from the mental plane to your reality, which is extremely important if you know, what to, if you know how to manipulate how you see light. Meaning, you know, some people put up red and blue and green to change their moods. Extremely important. But not from the spooky aspect. You have to understand it logically, though. And that's what some people don't understand. That's why your chakras still represent... Your chakras are always depicted in different colors because different energies actually affect... Or different lights actually affect the different colors and your chakra points. On top of that, light can also be transferred to different type of energy. So light ends up being that tool that sets you up to actually be able to understand different types of energy, to be able to different un, to, to be able to understand even the spiritual world, because when we get into, because I know a layman person will be like, "I, right, a rock, that's not the same as like light or like mind, mental substance. I, I can't. It's not the same." And he's like, "Yeah, it's just dealing with frequency. The lower the frequency, the more dense it is, the harder it may seem. So that means normally at that at that from that point of view, light is really unique." Because it kind of represents aspects of the mental plane and astral plane that you could actually see. 
which is crucial to understanding the universe and even understanding how you change your reality, to be honest. Because even when they depict a color, when they depict a chakra in a, in a, in a certain color, realistically, you can change the colors, any energy field, depending on what mood you want and depending on what action you want to do. So it's extremely important to have a basic understanding of light. Sound is crucial because for me, it's vibration, it's, every, it's light and sound. And light and sound are extremely important because that's why even in some ancient traditions, they'll, have, they'll beat the drums and stuff like that and they'll be able to alter their consciousness because sound has the ability to do that. Sound has the ability to do it in such a way that it bypasses ego. Extremely important. Sound is directly related to air. So, you know, when I talk about alchemy, I talk about mercurial tools, which are tools that interact between the high world and low world, and interacts between both, so like mercury. They always say mercury opens up doors to the gods, or the messenger to the gods, because it goes up to the mental plane. Very important to understand. So when you have a mercurial tool, it's basically a tool that's used by occultists to basically be able to bring down energies from the higher realms. The reason why a lot of people are trapped in the lower realms, even mentally trapped, is because they don't know how to bring those energies down to open up doors for themselves. And I don't mean physical doors, I mean mental doors. That's a big difference. So basically being able to understand sound and light and thought are extremely important because even our present quantum physics that we have wouldn't have came about if the full time wasn't discovered. If we didn't understand that, if you don't understand really how light works, you're not going to understand quantum physics. When you understand how you could have a particle, but then you have, when you have a particle and a wave, it makes a unique substance. Extremely important to understand that. So sometimes even our arguments about light and sound or arguments about thought, arguments about life and death. When you understand what thought is, thought is beyond even the physical body. The, the, the brain is like a transmitter that receives the thought. So even if I said, I'm going to go and open the door right now, and I know that consciously, I had the thought in my brain like two to four seconds before I even consciously were aware of it. So even the concepts like life after death will be answered if we really understood vibration a lot better. Even things like diseases. Illnesses, you know, even simple things like mood swings, poverty, even poverty is a sound. When the Eastern masters talk about mantras to switch up your aura, you know, your vibration to bring in money, some people hear that and say, okay, I could just sit at home and just play a mantra and I'm going to get some money. No, it means it's going to change your vibration that if you go outside, you draw more people to you. So in a sense, sometimes these things don't get understood metaphysically because our understanding of basic science needs to be upgraded so when you talk about sound light thought vibration even matter it's the same thing just in different density levels and it's not as much and the reason why they may see because you know you've heard many people say that but because you don't understand energy and sound you don't understand that in a sense when you lock energy and sound, when you understand energy and sound and you really understand it in your mind, you can then manipulate matter, manipulate your body in ways that could seem like science fiction. Is that going to happen in six months? Is that going to happen in five years? No, you have to understand. I mean, shoot, it takes a doctor, college and medical school to be an average doctor. To be a great doctor, they need hands-on experience. You know, to be a great doctor, they need at least 10 years of practicing medicine. So then you're going to get 16 years. This is much more complex than medicine by itself. So it's going to take a while. But if you don't have a logical understanding of anything, then you're not going to be able to understand a lot of occult truths that are very simple. So the debate between sound and light seems complex because we don't look at them as vibration. Light is vibration. Red light, blue light, yellow light only looks like they have a different vibration, different density level. Sound, sound and light are almost the same, just light's more complex. But you be honest. Just more complex vibration. And it, but through its complicity, a complexity, what happened naturally is it just travels faster. Matter doesn't affect it as much. doesn't need matter as much as sound needs matter to travel. Because we, people may not understand that, but wind and gas is matter. Basic understandings like this are important. Because when you look at the human body, the human body is actually 65% oxygen. So if you didn't think wind was matter, when you look at you, like for people who don't think wind is matter, you look at the human body and you'd be like, well, the human body is hard, it's solid. But 65% of the human body is oxygen. It's matter. But it seems solid. So 
in a lot of ways sometimes basic understanding of these principles will help you understand occult fundamentals so i hope this helps until next time peace